Mutiny. William's dangerous Charles move causes tensions behind palace walls. As the Prince of Wales marks his 41st birthday, tensions are rising behind palace doors after he pulled a swift one over on the king. I think there is one thing I can safely say that neither of us are ever going to do. I don't think we'll ever go out shopping for a gift for a prince. As if the job weren't difficult enough already, just imagine how much trickier things have become this year for Catherine when it comes to finding something nice for her husband, Prince William, who turned 41 on Wednesday. In the last year, he became the Prince of Wales, and he has gotten his own archipelago of 10 islands, a 52,000-acre real estate portfolio, and a trust worth about $1.8 billion on a good day, and also the legal right to any whale carcass that happens to wash up in Cornwall. So I don't really think a bottle of nice cologne or a tie is going to be good enough. As William celebrated his first birthday as holder of the 12th century title, the reality of things is that he also inherited something that very few royals have ever wanted, and something which is really not very nice at all. So what all of this means would be an interesting enough story in and of itself, but something is going on in London, something that has never happened before and that is causing tensions in the world of the royals. Even though William might not be the most exciting type of person, still, he is very trustworthy. He's the number one good boy, and he is staging a bit of a stealthy rebellion against his father, King Charles. Now, to understand this whole situation, there is one simple thing that you've got to know. Being the Prince of Wales is actually not a great job. Even though it means that the prince is very near the throne, it's still a pretty heavy cross to bear, and it's something that has been making English royal guys' lives a lot more difficult since about 1284. That's when Edward I, also known as Edward Longshanks, got his hand on the fiefdom of Wales. So to be the Prince of Wales also means that you are essentially trapped in limbo for decades at a time. It carries with it seniority, but no extra power. It carries with it added responsibility for the crown, but also demands a certain fealty to the sovereign. You're supposed to just know how your place is, like some kind of princely geisha. For somebody who was raised to be king, it can be very frustrating. It can be an experience that requires one to swallow their pride. But William seems bound and determined to do things his way. He doesn't care what the precedent is. It doesn't matter that he's beginning to look like something of a diet usurper. In the late 70s, Charles, the then Prince of Wales, was at a dinner party with the cabinet of the former British Prime Minister, James Callaghan. And he told a story about how a flight attendant had once said to him, God, what a rotten, boring job you've got. Now everybody at the dinner, according to the writer Anthony Holden, then laughed appropriately. Charles said, but no, you don't understand what I mean. She was right. I think what he was really saying was that holding that title is no walk in the park. There is no job description. There's no guidelines for how the heir to the throne is supposed to amuse themselves in the years that they're just waiting. They're waiting for their royal parent to finally pass. In the past, being the Prince of Wales typically meant having hot and cold running mistresses, a few VDs, and a serious taste for quail's eggs. Now, the biggest problem for these princes was gout, or maybe falling off a horse after drinking too much, or maybe running out of money after buying too many canalettas. And unfortunately for Charles, who loves art, and as we all know, had a thing for a certain mistress, that paradigm shifted a lot in the 20th century. Instead of getting to gallivant around Paris with working girls, he got to spend decades of just hanging around the palace and waiting for a hospital wing to need to be opened. It was in 1958, at the age of nine years old, that Charles heard the news on the television in his boarding school master's study that his mother decided to elevate him to the Prince of Wales. And then, for about the next 50 years, he was left to figure out what in the world he was supposed to do with himself. Living a lazy life or being debaucherous were not really options, but what exactly could he do? He was expected to work, but not to work too much because he didn't want to overshadow his mother. He was meant to be a senior royal, but also a loyal foot soldier. Charles's Prince's Trust was and still is an impressive operation, but still he spent decades in basically palace purgatory, and now William's turn is upon us, and obviously he is not wanting to play the same game. In fact, something pretty remarkable has been happening in London that at any other time would have been a lot bigger news. It looks like William is going to stage a far from subtle mutiny, and he doesn't have any intention whatsoever of playing by his father's rules. 
Now, last weekend was Trooping the Color. That, of course, was King Charles's official birthday parade. It was Charles's first parade as king and resulted in him actually riding in the grand event, the first monarch to do that since 1986. Really, Charles should have woken up on Sunday to see his face plastered all over the front pages of the news and lots of column mentions celebrating his horsey turn. But did this happen? Absolutely not. Instead, the Sunday Times, the Telegraph, and the Mail on Sunday all led with a new photo of William and his three beautiful children. This photo is what they decided to release to celebrate Father's Day, and so it relegated Charles's first trooping to the inside pages. How dare he knock the king off the front page on such an important occasion, and something he had been practicing for for weeks. So Richard Eden, who writes for the Daily Mail, reported that William's move caused tensions, but it gets even worse from there. Not only had William and Catherine's Kensington Palace office put out this new sweet family photo on the same weekend as the King's big party, but William also chose that precise moment in time to give his first interview since assuming his new title. William spoke with Sunday Times' Roy Anika, and he got busy setting out his stall, saying that he wanted to put an end to homelessness, and he was planning to build social housing on his vast duchy lands. A senior former palace official told Eden the timing of the interview will certainly have raised eyebrows at Buckingham Palace. The interview and the Father's Day picture have blown His Majesty off the front pages on the weekend of his first King's Birthday Parade. It could have been sequenced better, especially given that the Duchy Social Housing Initiative isn't being launched for a while yet. Nika also reported that William recently met Michael Gove, the housing secretary, and Sir Keir Starmer, the labor leader, to brief them on his plans. What is this? A member of the royal family briefing government leaders? That sounds a lot like a job for a king. So the thing about it is, it's not like William is really stepping on Charles's toes. Instead, it looks like he's just dancing all over them. And it also doesn't seem like he cares how much he has bothered the king. Instead, it seems like he's planning to ignore his father's whale's MO, and it looks like he is refusing to just patiently wait for his turn. The photo and the interview, they do seem very strategic and blatant. These are basically plays that starting to establish himself in the minds of the people as a proactive, engaged, campaigning king-in-waiting. And it doesn't really matter what the possible overall expense to the monarchy is, where unity is supposed to be the name of the game. This is certainly personal brand building. I mean, seriously, what we have just seen William do is stage a PR slash power grab. It looks like he's a restless prince with big ambitions and not much patience. It's almost enough to make a king consider just sending him to his ten islands for a little bit. Maybe he could even take a book or two with him. And don't be afraid to click the subscribe button to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in, have a lovely weekend, and we'll be back to see you all tomorrow.